Hey, what's going on guys? With the Nexomon Extinction's mobile port having launched and the Nexomon Abyssals DLC seemingly on the horizon, I thought it'd make sense to revisit various aspects of the game for both new and returning players alike. Today's video is going to be a list of tips for beginner players ranging from what types of Nexomon you should look out for to what kind of important things you should keep in mind. That said, I have 10 tips and tricks in total, so I do hope you guys enjoy. Let's do it. Number one, starters can all be caught very early on. This point, while perhaps already known to some, is a very important one when it comes to the vast array of starters and perhaps you the player wanting more than just one on your team. I wouldn't fret too much about which starter you choose as you can pretty much go catch them all within the first hour or two of gameplay. That said, don't pick Dinja because you can literally find it right here where you learn how to catch an Exomon. But I have a whole location guide ready for you guys linked down below, so definitely feel free to check it out. Number two, the capture mechanic. Now, speaking of capturing, Nexomon Extinction features a variety of Nexo traps from the basic one to various type-based ones and the elusive golden Nexo trap, which is essentially your master ball equivalent. However, you can find quite a few throughout your journey. That said, type-based Nexo traps always are better than the basics, even if the types do not match up. So that is something to keep in mind. And there's also a food mechanic by which you can feed Nexomon particular foods, which will increase your capture rate. The perfect berry is by far the best food, making your chances of capturing the Nexomon increase substantially, and they can actually be purchased via the merchants in Lataria. You can also further your chances by finding various whistles, which increase your capture rates of particular types by a set percentage. Number three, Cosmic Nexomon. Now, speaking of capturing Nexomon, there's one particular type of Nexomon that you definitely want to keep on the lookout for, and those are Cosmic Nexomon, which are the game's versions of Shinies. The way to indicate a Shiny or Cosmic Nexomon, if you're not familiar with the default color schemes, is its HP slash HUD information bar. It'll just flash if it's a Cosmic. There are ways to increase the odds of finding a Cosmic Nexomon, including progressing the story and catching various Nexomon, but if you want a more in-depth guide on it, here's this video linked in the description. Description. Number four, rarity. Now, if you've seen my other tips and tricks video for Nexomon 1, you know that there are varying rarity tiers in the game. And in the first game, the rarity dictates how many evolutions each Nexomon will get. This, however, is not how it works in Nexomon Extinction, with rarity still dictating which Nexomon are generally the best stat wise, but not having an effect on the evolution mechanic itself. You can have cosmic Nexomon that evolve twice and you can have mega rares that do not. Speaking of which, there are a few rarity tiers to keep in mind and generally the later on this list, the better the Nexomon. These tiers include common, uncommon, rare, mega rare, ultra rare or starters, legendary and ultimate. If you want the best Nexomon, try to focus mainly on capturing mega rare and ultra rare Nexomon throughout your journey. Number five, extinct Nexomon. This next tip is regarding the extinct Nexomon that can be obtained in the wild via a certain side quest. All of these Nexomon are mega rare tier, and most of them look familiar as they are new takes to the old Nexomon from Nexomon 1. To unlock these, you have to locate this building on the very west side of Parham City, battle this dude, and then give him a thousand coins. Once you do, you'll be able to find them in the wild. Number six, vaults. Throughout your journey, you may come across various side quests that offer you a vault key, or a vault itself, which requires a key. These vaults will be paramount in capturing the legendary Dragon Nexomon in the post game, so don't miss an opportunity to grab as many keys and explore as many of these vaults as possible during your journey. There are nine keys and nine vaults total, each of which contains some goodies, including golden Nexo traps and companion characters. I've got two guides already for you guys going over the key and vault locations linked below. Number seven, companions and skins. So this isn't something crazy, but throughout the game, you can find various items that are basically dolls that you can set up in the player screen to follow you. You can also change the appearance of your character as well on the fly. My only complaint with the system is that the following Nexomon tend to get left behind because they're very slow and it gets kind of distracting. Number eight, cores. Next up, we have an addition to the battle system that was not present in Nexomon 1, but is much appreciated here, that being the core system. Each Nexomon can hold up to four cores at a time, and they come in varying sizes, which dictate how good they are. You have your typical cores, which increase your stats, but they're also cores for increasing the amount of money you get and the amount of XP you get from a battle. These cores can also stack, so you can get some really crazy combinations going. For a full guide on cores, and yes, another plugin, because if I went into full detail on all of these mechanics, we'd be here forever. That said, check out this video. Number nine, open world. 
Yes, the game is open or semi-open world. This means that you can travel to areas in which you're not specifically meant to right off the bat. A few areas that come to mind are Palmea, the Immortal Citadel, and the Drake Isles. While you won't have full access to these areas until you've progressed the story, you can still catch the Nexomon around, and since level scaling is a thing, you won't be under level. This is especially good for the mega rare dragons, whom I've made a guide for, and the starters. Don't be afraid to explore because it is quite rewarding. And finally, number 10, level creep. Yes, like I said, level scaling is a thing, but it does scale based on your progression. So upon achieving certain milestones, the enemies will level up across the world. If you avoid trainers and avoid any sort of battles, you'll find yourself being under leveled very fast. On top of this, most Nexomon do not learn moves outside of the normal type and their own type so if you're lacking certain coverage and you're under leveled you're gonna get wrecked and there you have it, guys those were 10 tips and tricks for newcomers and perhaps even returning players in nexomon extinction let me know some of your tips and tricks in the comments below and what other types of nexomon guides you'd like to see if you are new to the channel or haven't already please make sure to subscribe for more monster taming content you can also follow me on twitter at gymleaderedd and check out our discord all links will be in the description Special thanks to Steelcase and Jim Hamilton, our mythical tier Patreon backers, and the rest of our patrons as well. See you guys next time. Peace.